Everyone, welcome to Onion Skin, and this is part two in migrating from Flash to Toon Boom. And this is actually being recorded first because we're going to be drawing the tree that you saw in part one using all of the nifty features in Toon Boom drawing. So let's look at some of the similarities and differences in creating vector art. So leaping over to Flash, um, what we're used to is two main types of drawing, right? You've got the brush tool, you've got the pencil tool. You've got the brush, which draws in fills, and the pencil, which draws in strokes. And next to the tools is the properties panel. You know how it tends to change depending on what you've got kind of open. Uh, what I never really noticed until I was preparing this video, though, is that the properties panel isn't actually as useful as it should be. Uh, when you've got the brush on, it tends to show properties for fill and stroke, which are always grayed out, at least as far as I've ever seen. Um, and the pencil tends to not really get used by many people at all, because although we should be drawing our line art with a stroke, the pencil is so clunky and fiddly to use, like it doesn't have pressure sensitivity that we just use the brush. It's just nicer, fair enough. Um, but the main kind of properties uh, appear down here. You know how we got the brush, we can choose different sizes, turn pressure sensitivity on, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Now over in Toon Boom, where that is, uh, is over here, there's two different uh, properties panels. There's layer properties, which is exactly what it expected to be. It tends to get used more often for like effect layers. So think glows, uh, masks, refracts, particle effects, it, it does do all of that stuff and they're usually controlled down there. Um, whereas tool properties is, you know, uh, this bit uh, where we get to our brush control. So I'll grab a brush and put on a white color card. I'm going to draw a leaf, leaf, <laughs> leaf. Leaf. Yeah, that's never gonna go away. All right. So what we've got here is, notice that the brush tool isn't relative to screen size. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Well, I, I can't believe that we had actually gotten used to controlling our brush size through zooming in and out rather than choosing the size. Um, but you know, even when we did choose the size, there's only half a dozen or so actual choices. Wouldn't it be nice if you could go over here into tool properties and actually choose how thick you wanted it to be down to, you know, one tenth of a figure. And you can bump that. Oh, we'll be on a hundred. Let's try like 900. Wah! Yeah. Um, you can also choose the minimum size as well. So you get really good control over your brush strokes. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. So, I'm quickly interrupting from the future because I realized after making this video that the interface for the brush panel has changed. This is what it really looks like, which you've probably noticed. To get to the controls I'm talking about, hit that arrow and you get a whole lot more stuff. Check it out. There's even a maximum and minimum opacity now. Cool. However, one big difference with brush strokes in Toon Boom is notice when I start selecting these guys, uh, they are separate. Each piece is its own sort of thing. Uh, like if you were drawing an illustrator or if you just had object drawing mode on all the time. Uh, however, don't think of it like object drawing mode because that's really clunky and this isn't, because you have a whole lot of control over it. Notice while we're in the brush, there's all these buttons as well. I'll let you explore those in your own time, but they do things like you know drawing underneath like that, which is pretty nice. Um, this is also pretty good. Auto flatten is this one here. This essentially turns the brush into draw like flash mode. Notice that when I select these, that's all already grouped together in one big hit. Uh, but I think it's good to get used to how this works, uh, where it is all separate pieces. And then if you're happy with it and it needs to all be grouped for whatever reason, uh, when you select it all with the selection tool, that same icon is down there. It's three lines, arrow, big thick line. That says flatten. There you go. It's all just been flattened into one shape as it would be um, in Flash.
So tool properties works like this with every single tool. As notice that as I flip between them all, the fine tuning controls as well as a whole bunch of different modes uh, is present. And they're a lot of fun to muck around with and kind of see what they do. So for the paint bucket, for example, the paint bucket actually works like a brush as well. So I can draw a bounty box around it and we'll paint the whole thing. Or I can hold down and go paint unpainted. So we'll only fill what hasn't been filled. I can go to repaint. It will only fill what has already been filled previously. Lots of fun stuff. So that's the brush. Let's have a quick look at the pencil. Uh, because what's fantastic about the pencil is it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same as the brush in every single way, except that it draws with a stroke instead of a fill. And that means, yes, it has pressure sensitivity as well. So when drawing line art for your characters, it's highly encouraged that you do use the pencil tool rather than the brush now. Um, and there's a lot of advantages to it. Really, the only reason why you'd stick with the brush is because it's familiar territory. But when it's this similar, there's no reason not to change. And the reasons for that is you can control its thickness after you've already drawn it. And it still keeps the, you know, the weight relative. The other crappy thing that people hated about strokes is that they're really tricky to, you know, manage in a race. If I try and take a, uh, yeah, see like how it just kind of splits the line and gives it this strange cap. Uh, so how does that work over here when you've got a stroke that works like this? So I'm going to do a few stroke lines like that. And then, oh, well, that's nice, isn't it? So. I'm now erasing lines through it. It feels exactly as if I was doing it with the brush. Uh, however, it is still behaving like a stroke. It won't take out chunks of it like this. It will always break it in half fully. But the innovation here is that it can split at any angle. So when it comes to just treating it like a brush stroke, you won't notice most of the time. Now say you forget that you're using a pencil and you start coloring in using using a stroke like that and you go to select it, you're like, oh no, what have I done? Convert pencil lines to brush strokes. There you go, you've got a nice solid shape. But if your brush stroke is just lines like that, you're like, oh no, I've just gone and inked a whole character using the brush. Uh, those should convert quite nicely. You just don't get as much pressure sensitivity as it otherwise would. But hey, you know, it can do it, so that's nice. I know a lot of folk in Flash, they like to, you know, draw their brush strokes first, and then um, they'll like hold command, so you kind of get a temporary command, a uh, select tool, and then, you know, kind of do this to smooth out the lines the best they can, because Flash will tend to draw it a bit wobbly. For starters, you shouldn't really need to do that with the pencil so much. It keeps things as you draw them. It doesn't really drop any vertices out of it unless you tell it to. Uh, with the smoothing here, like if I pump that all the way up, oh, behave. There you go, so that is doing what we've seen before. Um, whereas this option is optimize the curve. Uh, that doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't alter the line all that much, but it does have considerably less like vector points in it. So it tries to figure out how should these curves be so that the line will be exactly as it was drawn and save on a bit of space. If you do want to modify the curve a little bit, um, because it's a stroke, you're not going to be able to squash and stretch it, right? Because it's only one uh, thing. Well, not quite. If you go to the pencil editor under the sub selection tool or the contour editor, as it's called here, um, this thing allows you to kind of mess with the vertices that lie either side of the center stroke. So now I can start pulling out these edges 
and shaping them however I want. And it still keeps to, you know, the central pen stroke that existed. If you hold down shift, I think it is. Yeah, there you go, that'll do both sides at once. So you can really get solid control over the thickness of, of your pencil stroke. How cool is that? Okay, so there's a really simple crap thing, but how nice is it that that could be done with the pencil and you know, I can scale it and change its thickness and it's not gonna cause any dramas at all. Uh, so now we come to using the paint bucket, which I showed you before, it does kind of work like a brush, but we need to dive into the palette now. Uh, so what's gonna be causing you to pull your hair out, first of all, is we've been used to this. We have two, you know, panels, one for fill, one for stroke, and we choose whatever we want. Uh, whereas we only have a swatch palette here, so like what, we limited to only these colors? Well, what's there? Each one of these spots is a color picker. So if we hit plus a few times, add some new ones in and double click on that, we get a color picker and can choose a thing. And then, you know, make that one there and Brownie brown, that looks weird. There we go. Okay, gap closer in action. <laughs> uh, we've seen closed gaps before. Uh, here it is, it appears down in tool properties. It's not gonna wanna cooperate with me today. Please don't crash. That would be really embarrassing because I'm meant to be proving to people that this program doesn't crash as much. <laughs> it's not to say that's perfect. No, that's not why you play ball. Okay, so what's happened here is that I had an auto close gap on when I was first drawing this. Uh, so if you press K, you can turn on the, the kind of vector strokes and see that it's created all these invisible lines whenever I got close to parts. So I really should have thought ahead and had that turned off. That's that button there, auto close gap. Um, if I had that turned off, I wouldn't be uh, embarrassing myself right now. But uh, that's the way it goes, hopefully. You'll forgive me and not leave many comments saying you are not forgiven. Uh, okay, so why do it like this? Why have things set up in a palette rather than just give us a simple color picker? And that is because you can do this. So I've just edited the swatch itself. So let your imagination go nuts there for a moment. Imagine that you've used that color swatch across, you know, a few different characters, across scenes of animation, ages and ages and ages, and you've gone back and you've realized, oh, I, d I don't want him to be that color. Um, you know, I wish he had a blue hat instead of a red hat, and you have to go through every single frame and repaint bucket it. Basically, you just wouldn't deal with it. You just kind of grit your teeth and deal with having something be the wrong color. Well, now you've seen that it takes literally a second to update an entire animation, which is awesome. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about in this video is how to manage your vector art. Uh, how does that work differently? By default, you've seen before that it's a lasso select. So, you know, if I wanted to grab this, it's kind of do, 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 there we go. Um, if you're really insistent on having the marquee, again, it appears down in tool properties. There you go. Um, but I got used to the lasso after like 20 minutes and now I can't go back because it's so much more flexible. Because this is drawn with strokes, it means it's gonna keep exactly the same thickness no matter if I make it massive or tiny. So now it's gonna have quite thick strokes down there, which we don't really want, but you know, we can just Drop that down to like, ooh, what, like, not, not 88, eight. Yeah, there we go, that looks all right-ish, oh, maybe a bit lower, about five. Now, if that's just made you cringe that, oh, every time I have to free transform something, I'm gonna have to manually change its thickness. We're gonna be getting into this next time is using pegs, which are uh, Toon Boom's answer to symbols. When it's all grouped together and you make it smaller, then, you know, you've shrunk in that actual 
piece that group so it's not going to manipulate the actual vectors at all. I've shown you flattening, um, I'll also show you the cutter because you know remember that now we're picking up whole shapes if I just do that it's going to move every shape that I selected. If you want to do it the classic way and kind of just take a chunk of, of vector stuff uh, you go underneath the selection tool is the cutter and that does exactly what it says on the tin. So that should be enough to ease the pain in just drawing some simple art. If there's anything that's confusing you or causing you to pull your hair out, please leave a comment. I'll get to it as soon as I can. And if it's a big thing that I'm like, oh man, this will need a video, then I'll just make a video explaining it. So yes, please do tell me everything that's on your mind. Uh, hopefully it helped. And next time we're gonna start animating. How does the timeline work? Are symbols still a thing? How do you motion tween? Is it better? Oh yes, it is. Until then, farewell.